Hello, and welcome to the October 2024 edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. I am your host, Pamela Munger, and I'll be looking at the latest trends and market conditions within U.S. and global energy and sharing actionable insights powered by Vorf Texas tracking analytics. In this insight, we will cover core Europe oil market activity, TMX update, new refineries start impact, specifically Dos Bocas, super tanker cleanups update, and we'll take a look at the latest in China clean product exports. Core Europe's oil market activity is certainly in a declining mode, shown most notably by constantly slipping as oil liftings are declining faster than arrivals, resulting in net arrivals growing so far in 2024, especially for motor fuels. What this means is that core Europe looks to be growing more dependent on external supplies. Now, Europe's overall inferior refining complex is probably a crucial contributing factor to this, as middle distillates are flowing in from other hubs, while gasoline gets increasingly difficult to place, most notably due to the Dangote startup in West Africa. Seasonally adjusted, looking at any month versus the seasonal average of that month from 2016 to 2023, Crude arrivals fell by 300,000 barrels per day over the last four months versus the previous four months. Similarly, motor fuels arrivals are up by 250,000 barrels over the last seven months versus the previous seven months. Now, this could be bad news for U.S. Gulf Coast crude exports, which we can see by looking at our voyages data for crude and condensate, showing a decline for the second month in a row in September, falling to just under 160 voyages. Now this is well below last year's levels and comes after setting seasonal highs in July, which was also a month of strong exports at 4.1 million barrels per day. Now, Asian refiners are grappling with poor margins, and they've shown a lack of interest in buying long-haul cargoes from the U.S. Chinese refiners relied on cheaper ESPO barrels from Russia. And in Europe, the autumnal maintenance season added further pressure on departures from the U.S. Gulf Coast. Additionally, the fast return of Libyan barrels is likely to further dent U.S. Gulf Coast departures to Europe alongside elevated Aframax freight rates. Now let's get the latest on the TMX exports. We can see here in the left-hand side chart that seaborne Western Canadian crude exports from Vancouver by destination country versus the exports from the U.S. Gulf Coast. Now preliminary data for October days 1 through 15 suggest exports are crossing the 400,000 barrel per day mark after a small decline in September. These volumes have been supported by U.S. West Coast refiners taking in more Canadian crude, more than double what they have processed historically. The short haul nature of the voyages has kept Pad 5 buyers interested. Now, if we compare these Vancouver exports with Canadian crude exports from the U.S. Gulf Coast, as seen in the red line, a clear shift in exports out of Vancouver is visible, especially barrels going to the Far East, notably China. Spanish refiners still continue to import Canadian heavy sour barrels from the Gulf Coast, and so does India's Reliance. The latter buyer did load a VLCC from the West Coast, but have since returned to buying from the U.S. Gulf Coast. The reason behind this is mainly the transportation costs, which include the pipeline as well as the vessel freight costs. Now let's talk about China demand. October imports of crude into China are expected to remain below the 10 million barrel per day mark. Imports have lagged for most part of this year compared to 2023, raising pronounced concerns about underlying demand. 
2025 demand forecasts from the IEA, OPEC, and the U.S. EIA also seem to paint a bearish picture for Chinese demand. Looking forward, PetroChina, which was a committed shipper on the TMX pipeline, has assigned its firm contracts to another entity and is no longer a committed shipper, according to Bloomberg. Demand concerns, along with high costs of shipping from Vancouver, might have been behind this decision. Some cargoes have also been resold by Chinese off-takers to South Korea and Brunei, a pattern that could be repeated. In the short term, there still may be more potential for U.S. West Coast demand, especially in the peak winter season. However, the persistence of refineries on the U.S. West Coast is also not a given, as illustrated by the fresh announcement of P66 to shut down its Los Angeles refinery at the end of next year. Now let's turn our attention to the other new refinery the market is watching very closely uh, to start up on the east coast of Mexico, the Dos Bocas Omeca refinery in the Tabasco state. With a nameplate capacity of 340,000 barrels per day, is it, it is expected to produce 170,000 barrels per day of gasoline for domestic consumption and 120,000 barrels per day of diesel. In 2023, Mexico's East Coast imported around 335,000 barrels a day of gasoline and 150,000 barrels per day of diesel. Despite news saying that the start is not expected to occur until later 2025, gasoline imports have plummeted into the East Coast of Mexico, while crude and condensate exports remain below the seasonal range, spelling more bad news to U.S. Gulf Coast refiners who have found a much needed outlet in Mexico's East Coast due to sluggish domestic demand for motor fuels this year. On the other hand, Brazil continues to increase its share of diesel imported from the US versus Russia with imports from the US reaching over 35% share in the first half of October. Now, planting season is underway for corn and soybeans in Brazil, while winter wheat is harvested September through October. Considering Russia's diesel exports are trending downward for the year, this could prop up U.S. Gulf Coast refiners. Elsewhere in the import market, Brazil has also been increasing imports of LNG for power generation due to hydroelectric reservoirs, continual declines, despite recent rains in southern Brazil. Brazil's lower gasoline imports resulted from record gasoline production in Q3 and refinery utilization rates running at around 96.8%. Now turning our attention to the European markets, overall Jet Caro supply into Europe remains strong, reaching a 12 month high with increased imports from non-European origins in the last three months, as you can see in the right-hand side chart. And this is another reflection of Europe becoming more dependent on external supplies. Europe jet caro imports are now close to 950,000 barrels, according to data for the first half of October, a 25% increase year on year. In Increased imports from the Middle East continue to play a significant role in maintaining Europe's stable jet caro supply, with Kuwait remaining the largest exporter. India has also become the largest Asian exporter of jet caro to Europe in the first three quarters, and arrivals into Europe have increased since August. Now, in contrast, China and South Korea's levels have more than halved in the same period. Now, Europe typically imports more jet over the summer months to meet travel demand, but the high, high arrivals are coming against a backdrop of already plentiful arrivals earlier in the year. Now, looking forward, a drop in east of Suez distillate loadings combined with a slowdown of super tanker cleanups could keep volumes of diesel in the region despite an expected increase in jet flows. And the increase in jet flows is largely expected to come from the resulting uh, refineries coming back from turnaround 
and upgrade expansion work, including the Karbala refinery in Iraq and the Serco refinery in Bahrain. Now, as you can see here, clean super tanker voyages slashed LRA rates in half and cleanups have stalled so far in October. Now, concerns about potential Strait of Hormuz closures have hit once again in the, all the main newswires, although it remains theoretical, impact would be massive. Based on Q3 data, 13 million barrels of crude and condensate have transited out of the Middle East Gulf via the Strait of Hormuz, as well as 5.1 million barrels of largely clean products and 19 million tons of LNG. With market shares in seaborne exports of 27% for crude, 19% LNG, and 9% for products, a complete loss of these volumes would be of the highest political relevance. Now, except perhaps for Russia, there would be an extremely broad coalition of countries working towards a reopening of the Strait of Hormuz or the avoidance of such an outcome in the first place. It appears unlikely that Iran or Israel would want to take this risk with Iran specifically risking losing its only relevant buyer, which is China. Now, there are limited bypassing options of the Strait of Hormuz. The most pipelines already used to a high extent include Saudi Arabia, East-West Pipeline. Other pipelines are in poor condition and have limiting balancing potential. Now, Saudi Arabia is already exporting 2.5 to 3 million barrels per day of oil from the Red Sea, the very most of which must have come through the pipeline from the Middle East Gulf, with roughly 2.5 million barrels per day of oil being consumed in the Red Sea part. Finally, a word on China. Chinese overall motor fuel exports declines month on month due to tight quotas and margins. Jet Caro saw a rebound because Chinese refiners have prioritized jet production because of the holiday Golden Week, which ended beginning of October. Hong Kong is a top export destination, but month on month increment was towards Australia and New Zealand, where jet demand from these countries was strong. With China setting the last batch of quotas for Q4 at 8 million tons compared to 33 million tons in the first two batches, roughly for the first three quarters, its clean fuel cargo exports are expected to decline 20 to 30% quarter on quarter. Well, thank you for watching. We hope you join us in November for the next edition of the US Energy Insights.